Hi, welcome to the LeaseWeb series of tutorials based on LeaseWeb Private Cloud, which is using CloudStack as its underlying platform. My name is Simon Fiddeman. I'm an innovation engineer at uh, LeaseWeb in the cloud department. Today we're going to be covering off how to create and uh, establish instances inside your own VPC or virtual private cloud. Initially, when you log into the private cloud, you'll see the dashboard. From here, simply move to the networking section and you can see any networks that you have previously created. Instead of creating a new guest network, like you normally would, we will be creating a VPC network. Select VPC from the drop-down. You can see that we already have a test one here, but we're going to create a new one. Add VPC is the button on the right-hand side that we want to click. When we move to this screen, we see a few uh, basic options. Today I'm going to uh, create a demo VPC, and I'm going to call it Demo VPC. The description can be anything you like. I'm going to be very simple and also call this Demo VPC. Uh, the zone will always be the zone that uh, your account lives in, uh, and in this case it's CSRP01, our platform in the Netherlands. The next option here is for the Super CIDR, or uh, Common Internet Display Range. Um, what we want to add here is a super subnet, uh, a very large subnet, that we can use later to split up into much smaller uh, CIDRs for each of the tiers. I can use something pretty simple, 172.16.0. 18.0 slash let's say 22. That should give me a few slash 24s to work with um, as I create each of those for my individual tiers. I'm not going to specify a specific DNS domain name here but let's say for example that this VPC was going to be used for a specific platform or, or a product. Um, it may have its own DNS domains. Um, these will simply be uh, appended to the instance names um, as they are published uh, via DHCP into the instance. There's no need for one here, but you can put it there if you like. You'll see there's a final option here for the public load balancer option, either the VPC virtual router or a Netscaler. Our platform doesn't currently have a Netscaler, so we're going to use the built-in VPC virtual router, which is a pretty powerful uh, virtual router that runs as part of your uh, resource pool. Let's click OK, and we're moving through to the creating stage. This will buzz along for a few seconds, creating it in the background. Essentially, it's doing a few things here. It's defining the uh, network range that you were called for, defining the various options in the database, creating the initial uh, super architecture network uh, for the VPC, and potentially starting up the virtual network as well. The virtual router is that core component that uh, runs across all of the virtual networks within the VPC. Now, once that's finished, we'll be able to move on to the next step, which is creating the first tier. Okay, that's finished. Our demo VPC is all populated. You can see the task completed down below, add VPC. From here, like any individual item uh, within Private Cloud, you can click into the name of the item and it will give you details about it. You can destroy it from here, you can restart it, you can edit certain aspects. All of these lines here refer to things that we configured when we were creating the VPC. The other option here is configure and if I go back to the network VPCs you can see the configure is also an immediately clickable button right from the VPC window. That's what we were going to use now to configure further aspects of the VPC. The first thing it wants us to do is to add a new tier. Now tiers inside a VPC are like small isolated networks that are all bound together by a single virtual router. In CloudStack, you can have one external tier, which is usually going to be your uh, load balanced web tier or whatever your front end services are providing. That's where you're going to be putting those instances. And you can have as many internal tiers as you like, up to the network limit for your account. Each of the internal tiers uh, have the option of being with or without a load balancer and the external tier has that same option. We can see here in the network offering three different default isolated network offerings for VPC networks. 
uh, the initial one which has no further detail, the second one which is explicitly without a load balancer, and the third one which is with an internal load balancer. Now given that this is going to be our public network, we're going to go for the very first option there, so the default isolated network offering for VPC networks. This is also the default offering when you're creating your first tier. Given that I just said this is going to be our external tier, it's probably going to be running web servers, I'm going to call this my web tier. Now again, you can create anything here that you like, call it anything you like, um, as long as you're clear on which of these tiers you're going to be creating as your external tier, uh, and make sure that you use that default isolated network offering uh, for VPC networks. The gateway in here must be within that super CIDR that we were talking about uh, and it can't overlap with any other tier so I'm going to separate my network into a series of slash 24 networks I'm going to use this one as 172.16.18.254 and I'm going to give it a network mask of 255.2 255.255.0. That'll make it a slash 24 network. We should be able to assign IP addresses inside uh, this tier in any IP within the 172.16.18 range. I'm going to give the default uh, allow ACL a chance here. As you can guess by the name, default allow will by default allow all connections into this tier. Default deny would block everything. This is a useful starting point for defining inter-tier relationships um, via these ACLs. These will be set between the different network tiers. Uh, default allow, being a public network, probably a good one to start with. Also eases up our testing. Once that's completed, and you saw that was really quite quick, we have the screen which gives us a, an overview of how our networks are configured. You can see the web tier is up the top here. We currently have no public load balancer IP addresses, no static NATs, no virtual machines, and you can see grayed out at the top, no internal load balancers. We explicitly use the network offering that provides a public load balancer, but does not provide an internal load balancer. On the left hand side, you can see the virtual router configuration that we were talking about before private gateways used for uh, connecting to physical infrastructure externally um, should that be uh, set up as part of an, an add-on to your account. We can see site-to-site -site VPNs which individuals are able to configure. Um, these are used to connect your office router or home router, uh, any other network that you control, potentially a, a network within your own data center or a shared um, subnet within a rack into your private cloud VPC. Um, it is a static one-to-one -one sort of a VPN as distinct from a Road Warrior uh, dial-up style VPN. So these would uh, use an IPsec on either side to connect two distinct networks together, one being the VPC within private cloud and another one under your control at the other side. On the right hand side here we have one public IP address configured already. This is the default SourceNAT IP address that's configured for the web tier. Any instances that I create inside the web tier will, based on that network offering, be provided the SourceNAT functionality out of this public IP address. It means essentially they can get onto the internet, they can download updates, they can push responses out to queries that are coming into them. If I click into here, I can see the IP address which has been assigned. The last thing here inside the virtual router is those two network ACLs list we saw before, default allow and default deny. I can add in additional ACLs here by simply giving them a name, web tier ACL. I'm going to say this is used for my web tier and it's an ACL. If I move into the web tier ACL that I've just created, It'll give me very basic details, including the name and description I just entered, and another tab for adding ACL list rules. This should look familiar to people, uh, as it is basically the same as adding firewall rules within an isolated network. I can use a rule number to specify the order, 
a CIDR usually let's say 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0 meaning all traffic allow or deny what protocol I'm planning on using a start and end point let's say web traffic and the type of traffic do I want to be ingressing into this network or egressing out of this network keep in mind that this ACL is bound to the edge of an individual isolated network or a network tier within our VPC and so it actually counts as traffic moving outside of the network egress or coming into the network ingress and is therefore protecting all instances that are part of that tier. Let's add this one for now. So this is the first rule that I've added. If I wanted to add other rules, for example, I'm running an HTTPS web server, I would also run them here. These rule numbers should be able to be specified with gaps between them to allow for further expansion. You should also be able to renumber them once they're added. There we go. I now have two rules, rule number 1 for port 80, web traffic, and rule number 10 for HTTPS traffic. That's pretty much it for the ACL rules. What I'm going to do is return to my VPC and enter the web tier. From the web tier here, if you remember, we created this with the default allow uh, ACL. This is going to allow all ports in on all protocols. As this is my web tier, I'm going to change that right now. I'm going to replace the ACL list and make it uh, the web tier ACL. You can see my only other options is the default deny and the web tier ACL. As I'm already using default allow, I can't use it again. That's pretty much it for ACLs. Again, don't forget that the ACLs are applied at the edge of the network, and when you're considering this in this graphical format here, it effectively runs across this edge here. If I was to create another network, which I'll do in a minute, any ACL that I apply is applied at the edge of the network. Hosts or instances within the network have full reign to access each other as they normally would in a standard layer 2 network. You can see down here I've also now have a count of three network ACL lists because I've created that extra one. My public IP addresses count has not increased because I haven't added anything further yet. I'm still just running on that source NAT out of the web tier. So, assuming that I have uh, a web tier here, which I do, and I want to make another tier, let's call it a database tier for example, I'm going to click on create network, add a database tier. Looking at the network offerings that I have left, I'm going to add it as the default isolated network offering for VPC networks, no LB, because I don't want to load balance my database. It wouldn't make sense for the particular structure that I have. Now I'm going to add another gateway here. In this case, I'm going to suggest that maybe dot 19 is going to be my range and I want 19.254 as my subnet. Remember we created the super subnet as 172.16.18.0/22 so starting there and moving up the chain I should have several slash 24s that I can use. My net mask of course 255.255.255.0 and I'm going to start this off with a default allow. Now this would allow anything in, it is however an isolated network and should have no immediate external connectivity. When we look at the database tier that's just been created, again I've got a zero count for virtual machines and a zero count for static NATs. My public IP addresses count on the left hand side in the virtual router has not increased because I have not added an additional source NAT. But at the top where in the web tier the internal load balancer was greyed out. Under the database tier, which has been created without any load balancer services, the internal and the public load balancers are greyed out. I'm not able to add a load balancer to this network at all. Let's just make a third network here. I'm going to call this one the middleware layer because that's what I'm going to use it for. Middleware tier. 
I'm going to add this as the final network offering. You can see I still have the option for adding a default isolated network offering for VPC networks without an LB. I can also add it with an internal load balancer. And as I was saying right at the start, you can only have one external isolated network uh, offering within the VPC, and I've already used that for my web tier. So that gives me only these two options. I'm going to run this one with the internal load balancer because I'm going to load balance my middleware layer. I'm going to run this up as 172.16. What am I up to? 20. Dot 254 is my gateway. 255, 255, 255, again as my ACL. I'm going to put the default allow on there. Okay. That's not actually within the uh, within the range, which is good. I'm going to put it at the other end of that then. So we've got a middleware tier with internal load balancer 172.16.17.254. Netmask of 255, 255, 255, Now if you wanted to create smaller networks in here, that's always possible, uh, or larger networks if you need them as well. Just remember that when you create the VPC initially, that CIDR, the super subnet, needs to be big enough to handle however many networks you want to put into it. Let's go with this. That's created. I now have three networks on the right hand side. Middleware tier, which has an internal load balancer option. The database tier, which has an, no load balancer options at all. And the web tier showing my public load balancer. The next step for completing our setup for this VPC is going to be creating some individual virtual machines, some instances. Because it's on the top in my display here, I'm going to create an instance for my middleware tier first. So let's click into the virtual machine section. It tells me initially I have no data to show, no virtual machines running. I'm going to create an instance. Now you should have already seen how to create an instance in one of the other sessions, but essentially follow my mouse. We'll go click, click, click. Just a small instance, thanks. No disk. I'll take that host anti-affinity anti group because it's on offer. I'll add it to the middleware tier. I could potentially specify the IP address here, but I don't need to. It's going to be a fairly dynamic sort of a network, so I'm going to skip through to the next screen. I'm not going to add an SSH key pair because I haven't added my own. I'm going to click next on here. Now we're adding this to the middleware tier. So I'm going to call this middleware01. I'm not going to add it to any group because I don't need to use groups. Have a quick check. Looks all good. I'm going to click launch VM. Now while that's creating the background, I'm going to go back to my demo VPC. I'm going to do the same thing for my database tier and for my web tier. So let's click forwards through here. Going to decide I'm going to use a CentOS 7 template for this particular instance. Also a small, let's grab that host anti infinity group. Not going to specify that. There's my password just popping up for middleware 01. Everyone got a copy of that? I'm going to delete it afterwards. Not going to specify any IP addresses. Not going to use the SSH key. Database. Database 01. Launch VM. Okay, back to the demo VPC. In the middleware tier, you can see I now have one virtual machine. When I click into this section, it should show me the instance itself. There it is, middleware 01. I click into that. I get the normal sort of screen that I would expect to find under instances, showing my middleware 01 host. And click into middleware 01. And that's going to display the normal sort of things that I would expect to find under an instance here. Details of what sort of template it's running, the OS type, the compute offering, which has been explained before as being the specific combination of CPU and RAM. I can look under NICs. I can see the IP address that's been assigned by DHCP here, 172.16.17.207. Now this is my middleware layer, so that sounds about right. That's the correct network that I would expect to find it in, and my gateway of 172.16.17.254. Now you may remember me typing this in. This is the IP address for this particular tier that will live on our virtual router. 
Now remember I said that the virtual router is joining each of these tiers together. The virtual router is a, a an instance that runs within your domain under private cloud and controls each of these specific networks. Every time you add a new tier, you add a leg into the virtual router so that it can talk to each other the other networks and route between them. Statistics we can see very quickly. Again, it's an instance. It's got a core, uh, 500 uh, CPU megahertz and some RAM. Let's go back to that demo VPC. My database tier should have finished creating an instance, it has, and it should have very similar details here other than a different IP address. I'm going to go into the web tier. This is the last tier that I need to create an instance in. Then I should have one in each of these. I'm going to create this as an Ubuntu 13.04. Okay, small instance, no disk offering. Host anti affinity group. I'm not going to specify an IP, I'm not going to add an SSH key. I'm going to call this Web01. Highly imaginative names, but they'll help me to describe them later. Let's go back to our demo VPC. It hasn't actually updated the counts here yet, so I'm going to jump out and jump back in. Okay, now we can see that the middleware tier has one virtual machine, database tier one virtual machine, web tier, one virtual machine. There's my password for the third instance. That's all the instances created there. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to add an internal load balancer into my middleware layer. Now I've only got one virtual machine, so there'll only be one host that I can direct things to. But I'm going to add this now with the view to adding more instances to this load balancer in the future. Okay. Add internal load balancer. This one's my middleware LB. Doesn't really need a description. Doesn't need a source IP address. It does need a source port. Now this is going to be um, running on, let's say, port 443. And the instance port will be, again, 443, because I'm going to match the source and instance port here. I can use various uh, algorithms here, source, round robin, least connection. I'm just going to go for round robin at the moment. It doesn't really matter. I only have one instance, so it's only going to be hitting that one single instance. I should be able to go into the quick view for this uh, internal load balancer and show the basic details, including the source IP address, which will be what external hosts in, in other networks or within this network if I want to use it uh, will be hitting. So this is a, a randomly generated IP address. This is my load balancer IP address for this network. I'm going to assign VMs to this load balancer. I've only got one. I tick it. I press apply and that's pretty much it. I now have a internal load balancer for my middleware tier configured with round robin with a single host added to it. So that's created. If I double check in here, I should see another tab for assigned VMs. There's my VM that was created. This is the local IP address. Remember ours is 118. That's my middleware load balancer. All done. Okay. Let's create a public load balancer on the web too. It's basically exactly the same in terms of configuration, except that we configure it on a public IP address. So I'm going to go into my public IP addresses list. This is my source NAN IP address. I'm not going to use that one for assigning uh, the public load balancer. I'm going to acquire a new IP address. Now don't forget, this will come out of my pool, uh, my IP address pool assignment. Um, and so they are limited. You can't just continue clicking these until they all eventually they will run out. Now as you may recognize from other isolated networks I can configure a static NAT which is not what I'm going to do in this particular instance. I'm going to go to configuration 
I'm going to add a load balancer under load balancing. Same sort of thing, except I want to add this to the web tier, not the middleware tier. These should just be rules. So we'll call this one HTTP, public port 80. I'm going to say private port 80. Round robin sounds good. I won't worry about stickiness or health checks for now. I'm just going to add a VM. Web01, given that we're on the public web tier, that makes perfect sense. I'm going to select that and click apply. That should add my rule down below. And while that's doing it, I'm going to create another rule for HTTPS on port 443. Again, assigning the only VM that I have available, Web01, and clicking apply. So I now have available on this IP address up here, a load balanced instance load balancing rules for HTTP and HTTPS. Both of them are going to the single instance that I have available and that's pretty much it. If I click all the way back out to my demo VPC, my public IP address count has gone up by one because I now have an extra IP address uh, used for the load balancer which I should be able to view from the web tier. There it is again, that IP address that we just configured. We can see that my web tier now has a public load balancer IP count of two. This is for the two different rules that I have running, the HTTP and the HTTPS rules. Other than that, that's pretty much it. What I've configured in this demo, a public IP address with some load balancer rules on the web tier Remember that's our one external tier and I've created a single virtual machine inside that tier. I've also applied a network ACL to this a web tier ACL which allows currently port 80 and port 443 in on TCP only. I've also created a middleware tier with an internal load balancer. This load balancer was balancing on port 443, maybe I have a secure REST API that's running on this. At the moment there's only one virtual machine here and that's been tied to that load balancer rule. Last thing, I've created an instance within the database tier and again no load balancer, no public IP, this is the third type of tier that we can create. That's it for creating a VPC, I hope you've enjoyed the session and learned something from it. We'll see you next time in the continuing series.